Well, well, well. Well, well, well. You know, Dan, I uh, got up this morning. First thing, first thing, I, I got out of bed with a higher step this morning. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I was stepping stepping tall when I got out. Didn't even hit the snooze button. Got up, woke up. I felt like I was almost Jocko, you know? Woke up, looked at my watch like this. Well, and, if you were Jocko, uh, you would have looked at it like this. Well... I looked at it. Mean face. I looked at it and said, it's go time. And because I knew that I was going to go on, on Fox with you this morning. Yeah. Nothing like seeing, did they, Hey, did they send my message to you through that? that did they tell you that you're my best friend? Like I was trying to, uh, they, no. they asked me, I asked them if Dan was on, you know, before we're waiting to go on the show. I said, is Dan here? And they're like, yeah, he's here. You'll see him just a minute. I said, let him know that he's my best friend. You know, kind of like Ricky Bobby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, they didn't say that. Well, Which, I'm going to call him. No, well, I'm you can fucking call him. You can do whatever you want, but I'm glad that they didn't say anything. Why? Because that would have thrown me off my game. Really? No. Dude, we're kind of like shake and bake. Uh, yeah, if you mean two retarded people. Because that's what the story of uh, Talladega Nights is, is two retards. Really? I think so. No. No, I love that movie. That movie no, it's a good movie. They're just a couple of knuckleheads. And honestly, I don't think it's technically a movie. I think it's a documentary. All right, we've crossed over into actual retardation now. Um, you're my boy, Blue. Um, We're going to get into some stuff today. We've been doing a lot of shows. I know it's been a lot of uh, Afghanistan stuff across the network recently, but um, that's kind of what's going on right now. And it's not just about Afghanistan. It's about how the media is handling the situation, how the president and his staff are handling this situation and the fact that they are openly lying to everyone about it. This situation with people being turned away at the gates uh, and, and your premise, or at least what we've heard from direct contacts. And I, I called again this morning, by the way, to reconfirm with my contacts that we had this guy in our sights and that shit got shut down. That is 100% true. Yeah. And now, sen- isn't, it, isn't it crazy how CENTCOMs are? But he- here's what you don't know. CENTCOMs and I, they've also got, uh, what's her name? Uh, Griffin, the woman that's been like a Pentagon correspondent for oh, yeah. Fox News. Kathy? For, yeah, she's amazing, by the no, way. No, no, Jennifer, Jennifer. Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer. She's a very smart woman uh, <clears throat> and has done a lot for veterans. She's yeah. worked with the Independence Fund quite a bit and a bunch of other organizations. And she's, if you're looking for inside information from the top brass that's the person to go to for but sure. if you're looking for shit that happened on the ground that the brass is trying to sweep under the rug she is not the person to go to yeah is she coming out and saying this isn't true she said that her contacts said it's not true her contacts are fucking joint chiefs yeah. and their staff of course they fucking say yeah that. of course so i mean that's what she's gonna say because that's the information she has i'm not gonna start a fucking feud with her because i respect her and i like her work we're coming from two separate data sets yeah hers in this scenario in my opinion is irrelevant for sure. Yeah, Je- Jennifer Griffin is up there. I mean, look, I've, I've met with her many times. Yeah. Jennifer Griffin is up. Um, she is up. She is very she, legit. She, she, she's legit. She's, she's worked hard. But, but th- this is also the problem as to what the message is. It's being represented. I- I'll tell you this. The message is being represented of weakness across the nation, how these things are being handled, are not a representation of the boots we have on the ground because we have the greatest fighting force, the most powerful motherfuckers that are ready to go out there and do the nation's bidding. Yes. And I'll keep saying that. Yeah. And that's the difference in my, our level of reporting versus her level. Yeah, I mean, my level of reporting is I w- I'm going to talk to somebody that was there that day in that room. Yeah. And if I don't talk to somebody that was there that day in that room or somebody who I would trust with my life, who made direct contact with somebody then I won't report it. For sure. Uh, and I'm not saying she didn't do that. She's talking to people she's known for fucking 20 years probably, yeah. right? And I respect that. I'm glad that she's, uh, I'm glad that she's doing that work because that's an important part of it. And the part that we do is also important to give a full picture of exactly what's going on. And here's it. what you don't know is this who she's talking to, there could have been 10 people in between that level. Yeah. And no, no telling where it got stopped. Right. <clears throat> um, but it doesn't change the facts of the boots on the ground. No, the... the 
I, I, I'm not going to get into too many details because I don't want to expose anybody, but from three independent sources in different m- branches of the military that are all tier one operators, yep. we have heard this exact same goddamn story. Yeah. So facts, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> um, where did she say that at? Uh, she said it on Fox this morning mm. um, on a number of shows. She's been, she's been on a couple of their shows this morning. And uh, again, I like her, so we're not going to get into bad mouthing her. It's not about that. It's just about if I was, uh, if I was going to ask somebody how to hit a baseball, you know, I'd probably ask Mike Trout. If I was going to ask somebody how to do math, I would ask Ed Witten. Yeah. And if I was going to ask somebody what happened on the ground, I would ask the guys who were there. Absolutely. That's just how it is. So anyways, <clears throat> what is happening? Uh, your, your theory that you presented yesterday and that we talked about uh, on the news this morning is that the reason that those people were getting turned away, the, now these are green card holders and American citizens with passports getting turned away at the gates at the Kabul airport. The reason they were getting turned away and the reason that the Biden administration gave that list of names to the Taliban is that they brokered some kind of deal with the Taliban where Taliban will round up these people, bring them to the airport safely, and then essentially ransom them for pallets of cash yep. because they can't figure out how to run their own government and they can't afford to do it. Now, we pointed out as well that, and you'll hear more about this on the Friday show, but this uh, uh, is the same shit that happened in Palestine in 2006. Um, and it'll happen again. We're idiots. We do the same shit over and over. I mean, again, like, like l- let's go back. And why, why would we, why would the Democrats have gave all this money to Iran? Uh, what was it, 150 why, billion? Why, why, why would we send plane loads of fucking money to an, a, 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 a group, an organization, a, a country that has vowed to death to America and Israel and Israel and, and sent money over there? We couldn't even get them to follow the rules of the nuclear trade deal that was already in place. Mm. Why did we think after sending money over there? I mean, is, is that how you do things? Do you pay a contractor up front and then expect him to come back and do his best work? Um, I mean, if you're fucking a lunatic, yeah, sure. But you know, do you, do you, do you, is that how it works? It's like, it's kind of crazy, you know, that, that, that this is because, because we have no intentions. We have no intentions of holding them accountable. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. And <clears throat> you can tell that because this story where, U.S. forces, JSOC specifically, had, they knew who this suicide bomber was, when and where he was going to strike, then they had him, they had a Predator drone assigned to him, they had him in their sights, requested clearance to fire, were told no. That is a fucking fact. Fact. So I don't want to hear any more about that bullshit. Now we have to talk about why the administration is lying. And look, this is no surprise. For the last 18 months, they've been lying about pretty much everything. Yes. Um, because under this motif, I guess, this presumption that we're not smart enough to handle the truth, that if you tell people, well, technically the cloth mask only blocks 10% of drops, droplets coming out of your nose and mouth, then people will just assume it's not worth it. But 10% is a lot. You know, it, it, it blocks 10%. That's, that's more than zero. More than zero. Right? Tell me that information and I'll fucking use it accordingly. Tell me the information. The, don't like the Nashville mayor hiding data about COVID last summer. Shit like that. And Fauci lying about this gain of function research. If you want to see the full story on that, come on down tomorrow. Uh, by the way, our Sagar interview got pushed to tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central. So tune in for that. But we'll do a full story tomorrow on Fauci and how there is now evidence that his cutout organization did indeed fund gain of function research, mm. specifically coronavirus. That's not good. <sighs> Man. You know what we forgot to do at the beginning of this? What's that? We've got to talk about. What, Cardamax? Yeah. I mean, we, I was going to insert it later, just so I'm going to insert my dick and balls into you later. Um, <laughs> well, that won't be a big insert. What, what is this? You right uh, YouTube censors, creators, and commenters. Trump was in on this agenda, you fool. We're not here to defend Donald Trump. I, believe me, guy. I don't know what fucking tree you think you're barking up, but we don't give two fucks about that guy. Who is that guy? Some clown. Some clown. Yeah, Zach Geary. Uh, we're going to get to all that here in a minute. So let's get into it. I'll, I'll come back and do Cardamax 
here in a bit. Um, <clears throat> so I asked one of my friends yesterday a rhetorical question. Based on the last four and a half years or so uh, uh, in the American fucking ecosphere here, in the, in the, in the zeitgeist, you would expect that a fuck up of this proportion, both diplomatically and militarily, would be addressed not only by generals who are currently holding office and rank, yep. but former generals and, and officers and, and, and intelligence officials. You haven't heard a fucking word out of any of these assholes. Yeah, it, and it's, uh, I, I asked the same question this morning uh, on driving my kids to school. I called up um, some friends of mine who are, who know, who have some stars. Mm. And I asked them, I say, you know, and, and, and this is kind of the take on it right now. No, I'm not saying it's right or wrong because I asked the same thing. Like, why are you not coming out and saying something? Right. Especially when. Well, here's why. Yeah. Because um, they're cowards. Well, I, I don't fucking know. Right. So if they come out and say something, well, now it's all political. That didn't stop them before, did it? Well, a lot of these people you've never heard of that are generals that I respect, like the last general I respect is, is fucking, uh, is uh, general Conway. Mm. General Conway is a damn good general. Uh, you don't ever hear these guys in the media, so they're not going to start now, but it doesn't mean that the phone calls aren't happening. The phone calls staying it directly to these people's faces, which is in my opinion is more ballsy than just going out and talking shit on the media and throwing fucking mud. Is it? You know, I, 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 think if you, I think if you haven't been active in the media up to this point, it's not a time to start. But I think that if you have, like General Mattis, General John Kelly, John Kelly, uh, all these generals who, who have came out, General, um, uh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Dunford, mm -hmm. Joint Chief. <clears throat> All these generals. Former General Cohen, Cohen, Rear Admiral Michael Smith. Smith. There's a fucking ton of these assholes that had no problem talking shit about Trump. Yeah, so, and, and they don't want to come out and talk now. You know. Uh, here, here's, so let's give a little background on this stuff. And I um, think they're not doing it because like those generals we just mentioned, because they're, they're, they're going to get their book deals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're saving up for later. They're, keep, they're, they're doing what they're going to write a book about the, the conversation in private that you just described and try to make money off of it. They're and doing what, what I always call keeping their powder dry. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fucking black powder rifle uh, reference for those of you that don't understand what it means. Keeping your powder dry is um, it's essentially what you were taught in basic training to put your weapon over your head if you fall in water. Gun doesn't fire if it's wet. Unless it's an AK, then you can fucking fire. It, you can fire in a volcano. <laughs> yeah. Those things don't give a shit. Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of you will remember during the Trump administration, uh, this quote unquote open letter to America uh, during the presidency of Donald Trump, who, by the way, didn't force us into any new military conflicts. He's the first president in a long time. To fucking do that shit. Who, when's the last time a president didn't have us involved in a military conflict? I mean, fucking Clinton had us in, in, in Bosnia, Kosovo, Serbia. Uh, uh, Bush. I mean, we know about Bush. Yeah, Bush fucking, had us in two of them. And uh, oh, the Obama, first Bush, yeah. And, and Obama fucking started new shit in Syria. And <clears throat> uh, Bush won also. Fucking Iran, Iraq. I guess maybe Reagan technically didn't start a hot war because he was the last president in the cold war. Yeah. Right. It's been a while since one of these assholes didn't fucking look around and make sure nobody was paying attention and start a war so their buddies could get rich. For sure. You know what I mean? I mean, the first time a, hey, uh, Bob, look up when the first time Dick Cheney was the fucking secretary of defense. I don't remember what years it was. I believe it was under Bush one. Um, let's see. So during the president of Donald Trump, more than 700 military officers and former national security leaders denounced the president and his administration due to his handling of the pandemic and widespread protests. <clears throat> Pardon me? Okay. 
Uh, yeah, it was Bush one. So sometime between 88 and 92. Uh, in September of 2020, an open letter signed by hundreds of officers and government officials was published, which criticized Donald Trump and endorsed Joe Biden for president. This has never happened in American history. Yeah. This shows you how afraid yeah. of Donald Trump these people were. For sure. Like, I'm no Donald Trump apologist. No, fuck no. But, man, they really came after him hard and with purpose and in unity as well. Like, there weren't a whole lot of dissent, dissenters. Uh, the letter, which was titled An Open Letter to America, <clears throat> was written and released by a group called National Security Leaders for Biden, which sounds like a fucking super PAC of former defense officials who are all now employed by private companies who have defense contracts, right? So Trump is trying to stop all these wars and they come out against him and then Biden comes in and six months into his presidency, he hands over the largest exchange of weapons to a terrorist organization in the history of human beings. Yeah. And creates a war that we're gonna be fighting for the next 50 years. So <clears throat> this national security leaders for Biden was led by retired Rear Admiral Michael E. Smith. The letter, which has uh, clearly aged poorly in, in previous months, in the last few months, has statements uh, such as the following. We, the undersigned, endorse Joe Biden to be the next president of the United States. He is the leader our nation needs. He believes we must stand by the allies who have stood by us. Wow. Joe Biden would never sell out our allies or placate despots because he dislikes an allied leader. Finally, Joe Biden believes in personal responsibility. It is unthinkable that he would even uh, ever utter the phrase, quote, I don't take responsibility at all, end quote. So this is retired or this is active duty? Uh, it was a combination of both. H how can that even be? You know, there's a, something in the UCMJ about a, an officer. You not, can't not, do this. Not a non-commissioned officer, but an officer cannot speak ill can't of the president. can't do this, yeah. Right. But who is going to charge him with anything? Well, not Joe Biden. No, certainly not. Uh, <clears throat> among the signatories were 22 retired four-star generals and admirals and five former secretaries of defense, none of whom have spoken out against the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. Not one of them. We're going to talk specifically here soon about General James Mattis, <laughs> the fucking biggest cunt in the world right now, so far as I can tell, who hasn't said a fucking word about this. Uh, I can tell you why he hasn't. Yeah, we know here in just a minute. It's because of something called the Cohen Group, which is a group of former secretaries of defense. I think William Cohen was the guy that founded it. He's a former secretary of defense and his position on the uh, board of General Dynamics, who makes quite a bit of money off the military industrial complex. But we'll get to more details about that. And then in a later show, we're gonna get to the details about how many fucking connections between General James Chaos, Warrior Monk, Mad Dog, fucking Mattis, and China there happens to be. Very bizarre. For the time being, we'll stick with this. Officers against Trump. One of the organizers of the letter, again, Rear uh, Admiral, retired Mike Smith, cited the events in Lafayette Square on June 1st of 2020 as an inciting factor for the letter. Trump was accused of ordering the forceful removal of protesters from Lafayette Square in order for him to take a picture in front of St. John's Episcopal Church. Now we know that that was not true. Yeah. So in June of 2021, it was revealed that Trump had not ordered that the protesters be removed and the police had cleared the area so contractors could install fencing. But never let the truth get in the way of a fucking hey, good story. Never, yeah, never let it ruin a good story, man. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Uh, multiple military leaders have spoken out against Donald Trump due to his response to the 2020 protests, with many referencing the Lafayette Square incident, uh, which, again, nonsense. Oh, look, look, who, look who's coming up, who I just mentioned. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and you know... You know the mooch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a few things to say about the mooch, and to the mooch, actually. Uh, so John Kelly, former chief of staff to Trump and turncoat, said in an interview with An Anthony Scaramucci, uh, otherwise known as the gooch or just a plain-out cunt, I guess. I mean, he's a real piece of shit, this guy. Uh, 
that he disagreed with Trump's plan for the photo op and would have argued against it had he still been in the administration. But now, it doesn't again, sound like is, it was, it doesn't, it's like we're all arguing over something, something that, never that didn't happened. ever fucking Correct. happen. Yes. They're trying to take positions on stuff that did not fucking happen. Jesus Christ. Man, and you know what's crazy? <sighs> man. I, we'll, I'll get into this just now. Scott get, Lewis, before we move on, Scott Lewis, I don't actually have a problem with most of the, the decisions that Trump made as president. I think a border wall is unnecessary, and I think it's, I, I just think it doesn't work. Um, because it, it's like outlawing murder. People are still going to do it. It's like putting a sign up that says gun-free zone. That shit doesn't work. They're just going to find another way into the country. The best way to handle a surge at the border like that is to quell the issues that are making them flee their own country in the first place. That's why NAFTA, which was a piece of shit uh, uh, legislation, and for some reason, liberals still praise Bill Clinton, even though he fucked over unions so hard. Yeah. Uh, but that's why it fucking, it's, it's not proven to work. What the fuck are you talking about? Show me where on earth it's proven to work. And don't say fucking Israel. They built a wall for standoffs so you wouldn't shoot rockets at them. That is not anywhere close to what we're fucking doing here. Yeah. Germany, Poland border. That's what you need to look at, guy. It's an open border policy with fucking work permits of the federal government and uh, 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 infrastructure investments from the EU into Poland. You clearly have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <sighs> Man, the wall reduced border crossings. Yeah, it reduced land border crossings. What about the water or the air or all the other ways people have gotten in? Uh, tunnels. Dude, it, it hasn't slowed down. Tunnels. The fuck are you talking about? Anyways, uh, moving on from, from that person. Um, <sighs> General Kelly, John, went on to say, I think we need to look harder at who we elect. I think we should look at people that are running for office and put them through the filter. Like, oh, it, really? Is what that, filter? Is that the what filter, you think? The filter that you, you know. Get the fuck out of here, man. That, that's like, no, we've, we haven't never done that before. Like, it's not like the opposing party doesn't do opposition research and try to find any dirt on this motherfucker they can possibly find. Oh, God. Anyways. <clears throat> Navy Admiral Mike Mullen, who a lot of people like, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Bush and Obama, uh, read that as guy who helped start two unnecessary wars. Also criticized the president's allegations in Lafayette Square, saying, it sickened me yesterday to see security personnel forcibly and violently clear a path through Lafayette Square to accommodate the president's visit outside St. John's Church. The events of the past few weeks have made it impossible to remain silent. So a fake story about protesters being moved out of the way so the president can enter somewhere, which, by the way, that's what the Secret Service and, and Uniform Capitol Police do. That's their job, is to create standoff in the president. That made it impossible to remain silent. But I haven't heard this motherfucker say a word in the last three weeks. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? Former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Air Force... General Richard Myers condemned Donald Trump during a CNN interview in June of 2020, stating that should not happen in America. I'm glad I don't have to advise this president. I'm sure the senior military leadership is finding it really difficult these days to provide good, sound military advice. Navy Admiral James, uh, I have no idea how to say this name, S-T-A-V-R-I-D-I-S, -I -I Stavridis, maybe? Yeah, whatever. Former Supreme Ally Commander of NATO also spoke out against Trump in an interview with Time in June of 2020 in which he said, our senior active duty military leaders must make the case forcefully and directly to national leadership, speaking truth to power in uncomfortable ways. They must, put, they must do this at the risk of their own careers. So, so where are we at now? So we're, we're, we're well, well here, here's one or two things. Either we need to go with the assumption under this, under this being the advice of how officers and leadership in the military should be holding themselves, then they're going along with, they agree with how we've pulled out of Afghanistan and the actions over the last two weeks. Well, that's what Biden said at his first press conference, right? Yeah. He said that I ran this by all the generals and they agreed. <clears throat> Another defense officer who spoke publicly about uh, Trump was his former Secretary of Defense, Marine Corps General James 
Mad Dog Mattis. He uh, even resigned his position. So three former Joint Chiefs and his chief of staff and the fucking sec death all took it upon themselves to speak out about a story that was not true. And Mattis left because he didn't like what was going on in Syria, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so retired General Mattis was confirmed as Secretary of Defense on January 20th, 2017, and served under Donald Trump until his resignation in December of 2018, which, which is kind of crazy because that's one of the longest people to stay, stay with Trump. You know what I mean? Like that's that's one of I mean a lot of people were turning over. Mattis resigned his position as Secretary of Defense in protest of Trump's announcement of the immediate withdrawal of all U.S. troops from Syria. So, so now hate him or not, I mean I I don't I don't really have a I don't really give a fuck um, about General Mattis Mm. um, one way or another. but what I will say is, I mean, at least, at least he, I mean, he didn't agree with it. He fucking left. Right. He had the balls to fucking leave. You know, leave and leave, write a book. And leave and write a book. I mean, either way, they're all going to be able to write a book. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, either way, he fucking left the job. You, you know what I mean? He, he didn't stay part of the problem. I mean, he is part of the problem, but he didn't stay directly part of the administration's problem, right? Right. I mean, we, we got to give him that. Uh, no, I give him nothing. Um, in se- nothing. <laughs> in September of 2019... Mattis spoke out against a hasty withdrawal from Afghanistan as a peace deal with the Taliban began to be negotiated. Interesting. Where is he at now? In an interview with the withdrawal, uh, about the withdrawal of troops in Afghanistan, Mattis stated, the idea that we can now turn our back on this threat and somehow we're going to live on an island in the global community unaffected by it just doesn't match. We're going to have to learn from our past. Cool. Cool story. Uh, Mattis has had, what's the day, the 8th of September? He's had about a month now to say something. Yeah. To say, I've commanded troops in combat. This is not how you do it. I've commanded troops during an invasion. I've commanded troops in peacetime. I've commanded troops uh, uh, on a mew. I've done pretty much everything you can do as a military commander, up to and including serving as a secretary of defense. And I can't figure out what went wrong here. And if I did, I'm not going to say anything about it because of what? Now, that's a really interesting question. My answer is as follows. After his resignation, Mattis rejoined the board of General Dynamics. Remember, he was there before. Uh, About a month or so, I think, after his resignation, rejoined the board of General Dynamics, the third largest defense contractor in the world and manufacturer of combat systems such as the M1 Abrams tank and the Stryker armored combat vehicle. So two of our most common and expensive ground vehicles. In October of 2019, it was announced that Mattis joined the Cohen Group as a senior counsel. The Cohen Group is a business advisory firm that was founded in 2001 Weird year to found something like that, isn't it? It is. By, by former Secretary of Defense William S. Cohen. Other employees of the Cohen Group include former NATO Supreme Allied Commander Joseph Ralston, who you've seen in the news during the Trump administration, but not here. Former Secretary General of NATO George Robertson. Numerous others. Several former Secretaries of Defense work for this company. Two out of four overseas offices for the Cohen Group are in China. And one of the group's main objectives is bringing Chinese and U.S. companies together in multi-million dollar deals. It's fucking nuts. Feel free to look this shit up because I'm not making it up. The close ties between the Cohen Group and China seem to directly conflict with statements previously made by James Mattis. Uh, in, in his 2018 resignation letter, Mattis warned of the growing power of China and Russia, saying the following, I believe we must be resolute and unambiguous in our approach to those countries whose strategic interests are increasingly in tension with ours. It is clear that China and Russia, for example, want to shape a world consistent with their authoritarian model, gaining veto authority over other nations' uh, economic, diplomatic, and security decisions to promote their own interests at the expense of their neighbors, America, and our allies. 
Holy shit. He, yeah. could, he could say this exact phrase right now about this situation and be more right now than he was then. Yeah. Yeah. But where is he? I'll tell you where he is. I'll fucking tell you where he is. Where's he at? He's hiding. He's hiding because he has to keep his mouth shut so he doesn't endanger his position at the Cohen Group. For sure. Or make his stock in General Dynamics and all board members of that company have stock, which, by the way, is up 2.6% just since this debacle began at the beginning of Afghanistan <laughs> and up about 40% since the beginning of this year. Oh, you can't make this shit up, can you? It's up about 30 I think I looked last night. I think it was up about 38% mm. since Biden took office. You just can't make it up. These people apparently felt very brave trashing Donald Trump while we were negotiating five Middle East peace deals with Israel for the first time in history. While we were winning trade wars, we had trade deficit advantages over China and Russia. And while China and Iran were kept at bay. And now, now that we're trading American lives for the reputations and failed diplomacy of Biden and his fucking cast of goons, these motherfuckers don't have anything to say. There's a word for this. And that word is coward. These men don't give two fucks about America. They don't care about U.S. service members. They don't care about the future of this country or liberty or anything. I don't give a fuck what you say. It is what you do that fucking matters. And when it came time for these assholes to step up and say, hey, this is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. Yeah. You're putting people's lives at risk. And you're fucking up our entire fucking diplomatic relations with the entire world. All of our allies and all of our enemies. They had nothing to say about it. Yes. So fuck these people. Fuck James Mattis. Every single one of these guys, they don't deserve to wear the fucking uniform. Frankly. Pathetic. It is pathetic. <sighs> we should probably do some, some I'll ads. tell you what's not pathetic. It's fucking sleeping on a ghost bed. Yeah. Um, so ghost bed is offering, they get their 40% off bundle deal. Um, you all know you hear us talk about it all the time we never want to stop talking about ghost beds they've been the longest supporter of drinking bros that has that they're just great right um they have the cooling technology all the badass things especially if you're a fat guy like me um and living in austin texas it's hot so ghost bed is so amazing they have the cooling uh pillowcases which are absolutely incredible yeah, they've dope. got the adjustable bases 20 year warranty on their beds um Go if you want if you want to see how great they are, go over to their site and look at the reviews that are sent over there. I mean, we read some on the show that you'll you'll hear on Friday. They are just incredible at just how much weight they can hold for like all the women that this one guy talked about that he had. I mean, just incredible reviews that it, it goes. Yeah, it's really has. funny. Um, it, they have a pay as you go, 36 months pay as you go based on your credit. Uh, just, just an incredible 20 years warrant, 20 year warranty, 101 day, right? Is it 101 day? 101 nights. 101 I nights. I guess. Unless you sleep during the day. Yeah. Look, I don't want to judge anybody for yeah. what time they sleep. 101 nights and you can send it back. No questions asked. I mean, I mean, gosh, that would be like, that means you could 101 nights, you could have sex twice. And it and uh and send it back, which is think really you to, cool. You need to check that um, math, brother. But uh, better check that math. Um. So, anyways, yeah, that's uh that's it. Go check them out at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Um. Danthony is uh, uh incredible. I, I want to throw this out there while we're on it. Well, we could talk about Cardo Max since I didn't mention at the beginning of the show. Yeah. I I've been getting a lot of feedback over the last couple of days. I didn't know I'd never said this before, but if you mix uh if you mix Cardo Max with uh if you mix the the pink lemonade energy with the watermelon uh uh immune booster. Yeah. Fucking delicious. Pull a vodka in there. You're getting your immunity, Hell your yeah. energy, well, and your booze. And, Car and Cardamax. The cool thing about Cardamax, especially the immunity boost, um, cures AIDS. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. And uh, definitely is way stronger than uh, all the COVID vaccines put together, plus the immunity from having COVID, times that by 100 booster shots. And that is still not as strong as what uh, the uh, 
the Cardamax immunity booster is like. That's what Joe Rogan won't tell you. Yeah. He was secretly yeah. injecting yeah. Cardamax Seriously. directly into his dick hole. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I do every day. I haven't got Corona yet. And you I am to. a doctor. You have to. Yeah. I mean, how, how can you not do that? Uh, next up, we have uh, Amazon Music. I know a lot of you use this already. Um, I certainly do. I like it. It's searchable. It also is like a one-stop shop for all of my podcasts and uh, my Audible books and everything, right? It's all right there yes. in one spot. So since you're listening to the show, I think it's safe to say that you fucking enjoy listening to podcasts. Amazon Music has 10 million free podcast episodes. Uh, uh, it isn't just for listening to podcasts. Obviously, they got thousands of music stations, top playlists to stream for free. And uh, you can go hands-free with your uh, Alexa accounts and stuff like that. I use it all the time. Uh, it is one of my favorite, uh, between that and the Audible app, which is also an Amazon product. Love those, right? I use them all the time. Uh, I like the ad-free stuff. I really don't like listening to uh, uh, boring advertisements. That's why we get some pushback from time to time from our advertisers like, hey, what you said in that advertisement is kind of fucked up. I'm like, yeah, a little bit, but we're talking to fucked up people here. I mean, these people have taking an hour to three hours a day out of their lives to listen to us say the shit that we say. Uh, I have to communicate with them in a way that's going to, you know, drive the point home, I guess. Well, you so, know, I think, I think it was Jesus that said, uh, when with fishermen, speak like fishermen. Uh, I think it was uh, when in Rome. No, no. I think it was right. the Romans do. Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, if you've right. never tried Amazon Music Unlimited, Now's a great goddamn time for it. For a limited time, new customers can try Amazon Music Unlimited free for 30 days. No credit card required. Just go to Amazon.com slash American Party. That's one word, American Party. That's Amazon.com slash American Party. Try Amazon Music Unlimited free for 30 days. Amazon.com slash American Party. It renews automatically uh, once you sign up. Cancel any time. Uh, and terms do apply, so we'll read that fine print just in case. Uh, next up, we have DraftKings. This is not a sports show, but we are all gamblers. We enjoy it very much. We're gambling men. You watch the games with us, and now the NFL is coming back this week. Fucking finally. Finally, the NFL is back. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And uh, look, head to DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Place a bet of $1 or more on any week one game. You know what I do hate? To receive $200 in free bets instantly. So it's that, that 200 is going to go directly into your, uh, oh, yeah. into your bank. Uh, and not in your bank, but into your, uh, your bonus account. If Sportsbook is not yet avail available in your state, which it is not available in all states right now, DraftKings still has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season long with their daily fantasy contests. Um, if you're somebody that has ADD, these daily fantasy contests might be better than a season long Fantasy yeah. Football League, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, nothing adds to excitement like watching a game with a little money on it. You know what I mean? We bet stupid shit all the time. I mean, this is Delco's entire life. His life is so empty and devoid of meaning that he bets on games that Hawaii plays in, for example. Yeah. In college football. So Oregon State. Take that over. <sighs> Man, you're killing me. Hey, um, I think we need to send this motherfucker to rehab or something. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code BROS, B-R-O-S, to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game in week one. Get a free shot at a million-dollar top prize with your first deposit. Uh, it automatically enters you in the contest. That's promo code BROS this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. You have to be 21 years old. Uh, it is eligible in New Jersey, Indiana, in Pennsylvania right now, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit, and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, like uh, Delco might, uh, call 1-800-GAMBLER, like Kenny Rogers, RIP, or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Um, We've got one more here. Stamps.com. Oh, we use this a lot. Shit. Yeah, I love Actually, Stamps.com. I was, I was surfing on it this morning because our, uh, our merch company uses it. Everybody does. If you're, even if you're like a we, – we actually sell quite a bit of merch. So even at our level, we're, we're still using this because it bundles us with a bunch of other companies and, and brings our shipping rates and thus the money that you guys have to spend on shipping way the fuck down. Um, 
if you're starting a business though, and a lot of people did during the pandemic, stop paying full price for postage. Go to stamps.com. You don't have to go to the post office ever again. Nobody wants to go to that place. It's like the doctor's office. They have discounted rates, shipping for USPS, UPS, and more. Um, they bring all the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It is a must-have for any small business. Um, whether you're sending out invoices by mail or letters, or you have an Etsy shop, or you sell shit on wherever the fuck. doesn't even matter. Simply use your computer, print an official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail is ready, just pick up or schedule a pickup at your home. It's that simple. Or you can drop it off, whatever's easier for you. With stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS rates because of those bundled deals. So it's a no-brainer, man. Don't waste your fucking money. If you're in a small business, especially early on, every dollar you can save is a dollar you can spend growing your business. Uh, stop wasting time. Go to post office uh, and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. With our promo code AMERICAN, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. Uh, don't misuse it. Uh, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in AMERICAN. That's stamps.com, promo code AMERICAN. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Never again. Now, we can get back to talking a lot of shit. Yes. Which is something I enjoy doing. Uh, breathing is for pussies. So, uh, Actually, never thirsty says steroids equals bad sperm. Technically, you're correct. Unless you take HCG. That's Hotel Charlie Golf. Make sure your body continues to produce natural testosterone. Just a little tidbit of info for you there. Just in case. Anybody needed it. Yeah. Uh, so y'all are asking where my hat is. Uh, my hat. I got to go on Fox as soon as we get off this. So yeah, he's uh, Dakota is a fucking is, is a movie star now, so he has to have his hair done all the time. Okay, you're there a real was, dick. He was putting on makeup earlier. You're a real dick, Dan. Um, yeah, I guess. I got to tell you, this shit's fucked up. Yeah, it's super fucked up. So let's continue along this trail of stupid bullshit. Earlier this year, a group of 124 retired generals and admirals signed a letter questioning Biden's ability to lead. The letter states the following. Recent Democrat leadership's inquiries about nuclear code procedures send a dangerous national security signal to nuclear armed adversaries, raising the question of exactly who is in charge. Uh, we must always have an unquestionable chain of command. Now, that's absolutely true. When the, when the rest of the world sees that our fucking president can't string a sentence together, that he doesn't know what year it is, and that he has claimed that this horrible, horrible plan that was even more poorly executed than planned, when he claims that all these generals agree with him on this and none of them have said anything to the contrary... Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like doesn't it. doesn't really project strength, does it? Yeah. While senior military officials have been mostly silent about the current situation overseas, we obviously know about one Marine Corps officer who resigned his commission because of this bullshit. That's Lieutenant Colonel Stu Scheller uh, posted a video in which he demanded accountability from military leaders. You know, he did good on the first video. <sighs> yeah, he seems like he might be a little bit the second video, emotionally disturbed. The second um, video, he, he kind of, like he had the military where he wanted them. Yeah, he just needed to stay calm. But look, I understand why he's so fucking pissed off. And if I had given, uh, I gave what I gave to this country. But if I had given 18 years, 13 more than what I did, uh, I'd probably be exponentially more pissed off if I was a, a, an officer surrounded by that careerist bullshit where people were more worried about getting their next chip than they are about the fucking men and women that serve under them. I'd probably be pretty pissed off too, to be honest. Well, 100%, but you can't. You can't beat somebody at chess by knocking the board over. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, and uh, t frankly, I'm, I'm glad that he resigned. I think that was the right move for him ah. to do that. If I was uh, him, what I would have done is, is I would have never said that if I was my leadership, I would take me out of this position. Mm. I wouldn't have agreed with that, and I would have sat there, and I would have made the military come back around and apologize. Well, you know, there's a, 
there's an, a pretty good version of this in a toxic leadership environment, one that I think most of you guys have probably seen before. It was, uh, uh, I guess he was a lieutenant at the time, uh, Richard Winters. Remember that guy? Nope. From Band of Brothers? Uh, no. Played by the ginger uh, fella from Billions. I don't remember his name. I don't watch Damian movies. Lewis. Damian Lewis, yeah. So we'll all remember that the guy from Friends, uh, uh, Captain Sobel, was his real name, uh, was kind of an asshole, right? Yeah. An authoritarian for no reason. And uh, when it came time for his leadership to get called into question, two things happened. One, Richard Winters, who was a first lieutenant at the time, requested a trial by court martial over some bullshit, which is exactly what he should have done. If you're right, do it the right way, right? And then uh, a lesser right situation was all of the NCOs in the company writing a letter to the fucking commander of the battalion saying hey get this guy out of here that is not appropriate you say that to your lieutenants and your lieutenant your lieutenants say that to the commander you don't yeah. you don't jump chain of command like that but it all worked out in the end more or less um for sure but yeah i think it's he's in a weird situation that guy uh i hope he's doing well i, I do think he should have played it differently i agree with you on that um during his response he stated the following. Um, and he asked a lot of great questions. He's the only officer I've seen so far that's asked some questions. Yeah, I mean, that's the real thing to do in a debate like that. Mm -hmm. If you really want to fucking shut somebody the fuck up, ask them questions that you know they don't have the answers to. Yeah. Like, why would you not use the predator you had locked onto this guy you knew was about to suicide bomb your own people? Why wouldn't you kill him? Like, yeah. Tell me why. How, what was the plan General Lloyd Austin for the evacuation, the plan that you had your fucking G3 come up with. And what did you say the reasoning the was that they didn't, they wouldn't let them take the shot? Uh, money. Well, they I mean, would. obviously it's money, but the reason that they gave was that they were in negotiations with the Taliban, right? And the, the DOD, the, these emails will come out pretty soon. We filed FOIA requests for some of it already, we're going to file more. So they soon. requested it. So they've requested. So let me ask you this: They requested to take this shot in writing. Uh, that'll be in writing. Yes. Oh, they're so fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other part of it is all the NGO. They're trying to come back on these NGOs now, like I said before, and they're threatening them with investigations uh, for RICO, like organized crime, and and for human trafficking. I'm sorry, but not only are there emails from the Joint Chiefs from the Pentagon saying it's okay for these NGOs to go over there and do what they did. They also, when asked about why are people getting turned away at the gates, because that got elevated all the way to Millie and fucking Austin, why are they turning people away at the gates? What the fuck's happening here? Who is this commander on the ground? Kleiser. They said, this is a Department of State operation. That, that email exists. I have seen it with my own fucking eyeballs. As a matter of fact, they, they put a, uh, uh, not a screenshot, but they put a quote from it in the news this morning. You're not getting away from this one, motherfucker. Mm -mm. There's too many eyeballs on your ass now. No, says I. <sighs> so Scheller said in his response that the reason people are so upset on social media right now is not because the Marine on the battlefield let someone down. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down. And none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying we messed this up. He goes on to say, I'm not saying we've got to be in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying... Did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, a strategic air base, before we evacuate everyone? Did anyone do that? And now today, or late yesterday, I guess, but today it hit the mainstream news, we find that China has a plan now to rebuild the Bagram Air Base as one of their main through ways through Afghanistan. So that's great. He since released a second video in which he resigned. Everybody's seen it now forfeited his retirement benefits and blah, blah, blah. Um, not sure how that's going to work out for him. I haven't heard much from him. Uh, Who? From uh, Scheller I mean, recently. I haven't the, really paid attention. Here's to the unfortunate part. Is, you know, I think that he got a bunch of out, outpour from media and then he didn't understand how fast that was going to go away. Probably, right. And that's what sucks, right? Now this guy's quit his job because of what he believes in. What's next? How does he truly make a difference now? You know, I wish the guy the best. 
Uh, but it sucks to be the position he's in because it's him versus the machine. Yeah. <clears throat> Gigi, uh, who works in the markets, uh, just just commented, uh, Kian Bai, a Chinese doctor, is a member of the Cohen Group. That's interesting considering we are experiencing a global pandemic, which uh, 100% originated in China. Yeah. A virus that at least to some degree was worked on illegally by a cutout organization funded by Dr. fucking Anthony Fauci. And now we know that to be a fact as well. It's weird how the entire intelligence community went out into the ether to investigate all this and came back with inconclusive results. And then three days later, somebody fucking does a FOIA request, drops 700 pages of information like, oh, here's all of it right there. What the fucking CIA doesn't know how to do FOIA? So Are you me, fucking kidding I, me, dude? So let me ask you this. Um, just, just as gambling, does Fauci stay in until the Republicans take presidency and the administration? And when that happens, does Fauci get, um, does he get pardoned on the way out, the Democrats on the way out? Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to think about that because... <clears throat> Right now, if I'm just from my perspective, understanding how politics works and how human beings' brains work, my assumption is that the Biden administration or the DNC, whomever's in charge over there, sees all these people, these generals, Lloyd Austin, Milley, uh, the State Department folks, the, the Secretary of State Department, our press secretary, and the uh, Secretary of State, in addition to Fauci as countermeasures, right? So you've been on a helicopter before. You're times. flying a helicopter around. They have countermeasures. They're like, I, I, I don't think all of them are the same, but it's, it's essentially... Same concept. It's, it's essentially like Thermite or Willie Pete or something that fires out of the back and attracts... Oh, you're talking, about, like the, you're talking about the anti... Like for, for anti... Yeah, so if somebody's got missile lock on you... Yeah, know, yeah, so they blow, they blow all these... They're like yeah, it's particles and yeah. shit that for the, rock, for the warhead to run into or for heat-seeking heat. to find or whatever it is, right? The, that's what these people are now to the Biden administration. As things start to ramp up, it, when his foreign policy comes into question heading into the 2022 election then he will jettison some of these military leaders. When his diplomatic relations come into question, yeah, chaff, that's what it's called. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, <clears throat> when his diplomatic uh, creds come into question, he'll release some of these State Department people. And when his COVID uh, uh, handling comes into question, he'll release some of those people, right? For sure. But all he's doing is fucking throwing them out there to take the hit so the DNC stays clean. But there's nobody dirtier than the goddamn DNC. Are you serious? I mean, they fucked over uh, uh, Bernie Sanders in both of the last two election cycles. <sighs> Man. So <clears throat> just for historical context, we're going to wrap this up because <clears throat> Dakota's got to go uh, do some news. Um, for historical context, other than... Um, other than Mattis, who resigned recently, which we discussed, uh, previous uh, uh, secretaries of defense who have resigned, uh, Chuck Hagel on November 24th, 2014, under Obama, it was announced that Hagel would be resigning from his position as secretary of defense. According to John McCain, Hagel was frustrated with the White House decision-making process, national security policy, and excessive micromanagement from within the White House. Um, on March 11th, 2008, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates uh, announced the resignation of Fallon, uh, William J. Fallon, as CENTCOM commander. It was said his resignation was due to controversy surrounding an article in Esquire magazine in which he openly criticized the Bush administration. His resignation was interpreted as opposition to military action in Iran. So he felt what a lot of people felt at the time, which is that uh, Iraq and Afghanistan were first, and then we were going to try to invade Iran as well. That's what Dick Cheney wanted, right? Because he owns he, money. all the stores that fucking sell all the guns. He owns them all. So 
those two people resigned um, relatively recently, just within the Obama administration. Um, so this isn't something that hasn't happened recently. Uh, it's also, I mean, to, for generals to resign during time of war is not very common, right? And we've had these two guys, and then we had McChrystal with the Rolling Stone thing, clearly lighting up the Obama administration. That's three just during one eight-year period. Yeah. And then, you know, two more, I guess, Kelly and uh, Kelly was fired, I guess, but he was on his way out anyways. Uh, and, was he fired? I think he quit. Uh, maybe he did resign. I don't remember. But uh, the other guy, um, Mattis, two in that one. So it's like all of this, you, you don't see a whole lot of this in American military history, especially during wartime. But five top-level defense uh, people, generals or secretaries of defense, have resigned just since the Obama administration began, right? And somehow now, during what I see as the biggest foreign policy, military, and diplomatic debacle since the Iran hostage situation, none of these motherfuckers have a word to say. So, Yeah, and if you guys are watching, uh, I'll be going on Fox here in just a minute. Yep. And I'm going to actually bring some of this up. I made some notes over here. Good. And I'm going to talk about this uh, here in just a minute. Uh to just just because I think it's it's so I'll be on Fox prime time tonight. I'll be on Hannity tonight. Who will you be on tonight? Uh, I'll be on Tucker Carlson be sometime on. between eight and nine p.m. Eastern, uh, and then tomorrow night I'll be on Hannity sometime between what is that nine and ten Eastern? Yeah. And then at one I will be on. Um, I'm trying to find this. I'm trying to find who I'm going on at one. I don't know who I'm going on at one, but I'll be on at one here in just a minute on Fox. That's 1 p.m. Central. So tune into that. You guys have uh, a blessed day. Just kidding. See you in hell.